Today we're going to be doing not one, not two, but three two towers chimps combos. Or at least in this case, I would describe these combos as an almost one towers chimps. That is, one tower is going to be doing most, if not all, of the carry work slash DPS. So without further ado, let's get into the first combo that I want to try out. And that is the Ice Tower and the Dartling Gunner. Ice Tower being the support and Dartling being the main DPS, of course. And that main DPS is going to be the Ray of Doom. I'm going to pair it with the Embrittlement on the Ice Monkey. So obviously, once you get Ray of Doom, it's a free ride all the way to around 100. But the biggest issue is, of course, affording it and starting off. Because Darling Gun's too expensive to be afforded on the first round of champs. That's why Ice Tower on Resort is so good. And pretty sure it can sell up to, like, Kremlin from Ramba, like, 18, 19 on this map. Regardless, it's more than enough to save up. And the Embrittlement can help cover the Plaza Accelerator's weaknesses in saving up for the Ray of Doom. And that is, like... Purple balloons mostly, notably Camel Pearls, hence why with Enhanced Freeze, uh, it should be shooting fast enough to catch all purples before they, uh, you know, get to the exit. Also, I'll try not to sound too much like a salesman in pitching these towers. Anyways, uh, for round 24, Cold Snap, and I suppose I could get Ice Shards early, but it doesn't really do too much since right now the uh, Darling Gun can't proc it. Which is why Embrittlement is going to be huge. If you didn't know, Embrittlement allows your towers to hit any type of balloon if that balloon becomes frozen, so yes. This can now trigger the shards in hitting a lead balloon or a frozen, even without needing to buy powerful darts. And even with the camo, you obviously still want to go for the 520 cross path on your Rave Doom. It's kind of a no brainer, so if I did the math properly, then I should be able to afford the Rave Doom by about round 82, which means the accelerator and embrittlement have to survive till, till then. As for if it can, and how difficult it'll be, well, stick around and find out. For now, though, enjoy the time lapse as these two towers completely and utterly destroy anything that gets in its path. Frankly, for peace of mind reasons, leaving the accelerator at this point is actually better at triggering, well, the massive chain reaction and ice shards. Not that the accelerator had much of a pierce issue, but obviously, it helps a ton. And after this round, here comes the biggest concern of this challenge, and that is 81. And beyond. This is where Super Srams come to play, and uh, Ice Shards is no longer as good. I'm actually much further away from Radium than I expected, so I might need to be up to like 80, uh, 83, 84. On the bright side, even though I'm not doing much damage to the Srams, uh, the Embrit is helping to keep a lot of the stuff in place. And in fact, I might have put my Radium a little too far backwards, because as you see, there's a bit of a line of sight blocker. Not good, needless to say. Uh, this time, since I died, I will just trigger a bunch of BFPs at once. If we don't have a Pierce issue, might as well do more damage with the beam. But do you see how bad Accelerator is past round 80? It takes so long to break down a single ceramic. Because they're so tanky. Alright, how are we this time around? Come on. Micro. I think this is it. Just gotta make sure to focus anything that gets to the last bend. And there's 81, but 82 is even tougher with Fortifieds now. Good luck. Yeah, the non-Fortifieds aren't that bad, but this here, I really gotta focus hard at Srams that completely whiff, like these, for example. I have my point on them for over 5 seconds, and no damage done to them. That sucks. I gotta hope for a lucky ice. Nope. This'll be pain. Alright, one at a time now. One at a time. Let's make sure to... Target these ones. God, that's such a waste of damage. And uh, one at a time here. Okay, a lot of stuff leaking here, but come on. Ah, Okay, this is the god run. I can feel it. I can feel it. Two down, three to go. The key is popping it right as the ice will freeze the Srams. That, this one's bad. We missed a whole a crap ton. Okay, we might be able to get this one though. Come on. Freeze. Perfect. Only one Saram got through. That's easy. And let's see. I can time this one. Come on. Uh, missed five of them. That's fine. This will do if I don't choke. Perfect. 83 shouldn't be as hard, hopefully. I'm going to shoot myself if it is hard, though. Please, 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 please. Long line of mobs, but only a yellow got passed. Easy. And there it is, only one really hard round this challenge, and it was it was pretty hard by a mile, but we got ready to doom, and now we can sit back and relax. That's kind of how it goes with most two tower chimps combos in general. There's like one or two really hard rounds, so the rest are pretty easy though. 
And the difficulty in the 2TC pretty much is all contained in that one specific round. But that is the Ray of Doom 2TC with 1.9 million pops on it. GG. For this next 2TC combo, we're going to jump to 1 2 Tree, where I'm going to use the Anti Balloon as my main DPS. To start, though, we want a boat. Boat with this count and this range is a pretty good start for 1 2 Tree. I'd say one of my favorite beginner maps just due to the uniqueness of it with specific buffs and whatnot. And frankly, I think this combo will be easier than Rhea Doom once we get the Super Monkey up because this is a plus one damage tile right here, which pretty much doubles the damage of the base, base Super Monkey. Not to mention the Stuffing Stones are much better than the Ray of Doom. We got Tech Terror into anti Bloon. Tech Terror can already solo most rounds on its own. So aside from this starting cash issue, the only thing you need to cover the Super Monkey's weaknesses is one early game camo, and lead as well. So basically, camo lead. And that's what the 022 boat is for. So yes, I'll even see if it's possible to do this with only a base buccaneer. Base as in not fully cross path to like locked in one path, aka tier 3 or above. Because with how much better the Super Monkey mid game is, that's really all you need. I think if I beat this round, then we get a Super Monkey down and no more worries. Not that this combo is unique to this map, but 1-2 Tree is uh, one of those maps that definitely has a lot of unique 2-TC combos, as in it can only be done on 1-2 Tree and none else due to the specific buffs that it gives. In my opinion, damage is the best tile for the early game. After that though, Jungle Drums is what you want for just good overall general attack speed, and now we'll go for Ultra Vision so that it also hits camo. And once again, it should be smooth sailing, the only real concern being uh, timing the abilities properly because I won't afford anti Bloom until the round 90, so I gotta make sure that I don't muck up, use my ability on a certain round, and then I don't have it up for another round that's much harder. But the plus one damage tile is huge right now for, a, you know, a projectile that only does one damage if it's not critting. We wait to buy Tech Tier, just in case the purples on 62 are an issue. Believe it or not, this 30,000 damage tower still only does one damage for each bolt, and uh, here's what I worried about purples. I actually have to use... Uh, the tier ability. And even that's kind of sketchy because, yikes, yeah, the, the, the hotshot. The hotshot's problem is that the fiery grapes lose the uh, purple popping, so it has to do all the purple popping. This is a concern. How can I make it target only purples? Oh god. I didn't want to, but it might have to be a, a cannon ship route. Is there possibly a targeting that gets more purples? Like, maybe last. I don't want to do strong because it'll obviously, um, Hit the wrong thing. I'm trying to see if, like, the range can reach the ability and hitting... Or it can delay as long as possible, basically. I don't know, though. I guess I'll try strong for now. See what happens. Oh, there we go. There we go. That was a late ability. But I need to... Still clean up this many purples, and that's not happening. Restarting now. Just because maybe the correct order is actually to not buy Tech until 78 passes. Perhaps the 032 Romaki can actually solo... All the scary rounds before then, but that's still super sketch. Maybe I shouldn't be underestimating a double damage robo though, because hang on, here's 75. It actually almost works. By the way, imagine being so unlucky that you leak to a single red blue and couldn't be me. We're good now though, 76 here. I'm kind of worried about the Riga farm. And it is a Riga farm. GG. First and close, perhaps. It feels like it's so close to working. Alright, first strong and then first close right now. Back to first strong. Last try, nope. Alright, I surrender. Just because I think I want to have some fun. I'm gonna not go can ship. Instead, I'm gonna go for flavor trades. Just for an even bigger meme factor. This thing does twice the attack speed. So you see now, it actually gets all the purples. And so, same date's easy. This will delay my Anna Bloon even later, but trust me, we'll be fine. Don't let your memes be dreams. I think that's the saying, right? $20,000 to go. I guess the balloons are uh, far enough away from the entrance that I probably can afford to use, like, a couple abilities here and there. This might be, like, around 94 into balloon. Big scary. Not about these DTs here, but definitely about 92. So I gotta make sure I have the ability up. BD 91. Okay, this is actually holding on better than I thought. One ceramic leaked. How do we not leak a single Saran? Well, just simply restarting will do. $10,000 away. Can we hang on all the F mobs this round? 
No, but that's fine, because I think I can get two abilities off this round. And let me see, do I end off 93 completely? Or 92 completely? Sure. 93 isn't that hard with 60 DTs, right? Nope, we're fine. We're chillin'. So overall, this run is indeed easier than the Ray of Doom. Although I will say the difficulty was a bit more spread apart, as in... No one round was as hard as 82 Ray of Doom. Minus, I guess, 78 if I tried to go for the, uh, kept it at 022. But there were a couple rounds that were maybe just moderately tricky. And now is the case as last time, we just speed walk through the rest of the challenge. Don't even have to use the any abilities for 98, because anti has got us. And anti Balloons also got us for the bat too. Correct? Just flex in here trying to see if I need to use the ability or not, but nah. 1.97 million pops this time on the anti GG. And now for the final combo here that I'm going to jump out of Challenge Editor for is uh, Monkey Sub. And don't think for a second I forgot about this tower, but the big plane. How could I not? One of the strongest towers that you can almost 1TC with, the only roadblock being, uh, once again, the starting cash and damage for early game because never miss into Spectre is quite a big save up, especially since you're doing an, an unbuff never miss. So the combo with the big plane, I'm actually going to go for a submerged sub. This will be turned to a 420 later. And I think because I'm going for a D camo, I might be able to get away with not going for the camo cross path. We can go for the strongest big plane, believe it or not. So let me see if it's possible to save up for a reactor, I believe, first. That's just more reliable than anything else. With buying as little ace upgrades as possible, I give intel on that too, but I still think it's a little bit too sketchy. I think I need to buy just one rapid fire upgrade. And also ace micro. <laughs> The two forbidden words that no BTD6 player wants to hear. Rapid Fire does a job for 22. How about 23? Are we good? Are we good? We are indeed good. Submerge. And the save up is surprisingly not bad. Uh, I might need to... A... <laughs> of course I die right after getting Reactor. Well, a little bit of Ace Micro this round shouldn't be too bad, right? Come on. Reactor now? Oh right, the bug. I can't even submerge the Reactor. This sucks. Well, that's... Not that that would have saved this anyways, because it's still leaking to that. One stray balloon. Okay, how to keep Ace on left side. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. But hey, it's working. Yep, this runs way better, except I can't submerge it. But that should be fine, right? Oh, right, and I can't do that. Are you kidding me? $100 separates us from this round. Cool. This might be a negligible difference, but what if I, this time, I try putting the ace here? So it gets intel on two different parts of the track. Because right now, I believe, getting longer range, the sub can't hit here. But it might get a little bit of a head start, which would help us survive a little bit easier. Okay, so something like this. Tab, tab, tab again, tab again. And then change the figure eight here. Yeah, that's much easier. Probably the intel help, too. But we go for this now, and uh, this round shouldn't be uh, much of an issue that I can just get this next round. And there's our early game covered. I've also seen a lot of people in the comments uh, suggest to me to try a two towers chimps while doing a two mummy pops, and uh, you know what? If we can get away with it, I think this co combo can do it. Just gotta make sure to unsmirch a sub, like so it does as little damage as possible. But obviously for now, uh, before I get Spectre, I can't really do that. Or you know what? Maybe I can. Yeah, just keep it unsubmerged, and then for any camos that come out, just stay chillin'. So indeed, the unsubmerged Cursed Angry Sub makes another appearance here. How is our round 40 damage? Do we need Reactor, or does Never Miss actually have the damage? It does indeed have the damage. Quick Maths tells me that I can afford Spectre at about round 50 or so. Therefore, for rounds like maybe 49, for example, I'm probably gonna have to submerge the uh, sub a fair amount. Uh, submerge it again, 48. Untick it off right now. And keep it unsubmerged for as long as possible this round. Maybe until now is good. Unsubmerge it for the zebras. Uh, Resubmerge it for, I believe, the uh, Rigor Rainbows, yes. And unsubmerge again. Are we having fun, son? Well, I'm also gonna do strong targeting so that we hit the fortified leads, pop them down. And uh, we'll submerge once this mole pops. Anytime now. Oh crap, it's not popping. Uh, let's see. If I can actually afford this before it pops, that'd be good. There we go, got it. That came down to the absolute last penny. Kinda crazy. So, yeah, with Spectre, 
easy mid game where you literally can avoid getting any pops on the reactor whatsoever. The cool thing too with this combo is that because of the Spectre buffs to give it never miss shooting, it actually makes saving up for Flying Fortress much easier, although I don't know how easy, I just know it's easier than before. And before was hell, let me just say. We need to survive up to like round 89 or something like that to, to afford the Flying Fortress. This round's rounds have a lot of pops. I will just unsubmerge it quickly. Suspect it cleans that up. Still got a good like 30,000 pops to spare in order to get 2 million on the big plane. Not too worried. I think we're getting to the point where I should probably just take the uh, reactor off submerge the entire time. Because balloons are getting pretty damn close. Actually, no, because you see, it doesn't do any damage right now. But if I unsubmerge it, the darts will actually hit. So uh, it actually is better to leave it like this for the time being. Unsubmerge it now. If the next couple rounds like this tracks, then this would actually be the easiest of the bunch of the two DCs that I tried. 87 is a notoriously hard round, especially for the Spectre, but nah. Never miss Ace cleans. One more round to go. In fact, actually, I can, no, I can forward this round, I think. Or if not, I'll be incredibly close. Right on top for 89. And that is it. GG no re, everybody. Chimps mode has never been easier with the big plan. It probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it's cool that the big plane also still retains those never miss flying darts. Of course, those are totally doing something compared to the uh, massive main darts and bombs that are shooting out. Surprisingly, 95 is not overly trivial. But that's probably because we're just decamming it very, very late. Maybe my only concern is 99? Well, let's take a look. You barely even see 98 show up. That's how OP the plane is. I wonder if there was any way to, like, uh, have... Uh, the sub decamo, but I think that's as low as you can put it. Yeah, who am I worried about? Easy. Not just 2 million, but 2 million with like a bajillion pops to spare. So we're just, uh, let me just unsubmerge and then submerge or unsubmerge again. There's 2 million. 2 million and almost 30,000 over. Very nice. And due to this being the greatest combo ever, I'm going actually going to jump into the free play. See how long this 2 TC combo can last. Because I'm kind of curious how OP it is really, uh, although it might not last very long if these um, DTs only get tankier and tankier. Oh, this is not good. Might need to do some micro. Like, make sure the uh, darts are targeting DTs and not the uh, ZMGs. Right now it's targeting a lot of the ZMGs. Uh-oh. Yeah. I'm telling you, we did not get this far only to make it two rounds further into free play. So let's see if maybe Standard Path here. This is much better because it's it being higher up takes the focus off the ZMG. Next round I'm worried about is most likely round 106. Even more DDTs. I don't think there's a chance. There's so many. If only a DK would earlier. Maybe actually O25 would have survived longer. I went for the 205 for more damage, but it very well might be that maybe the extra camera damage and us hitting DDTs earlier actually is more significant. Just out of curiosity in Sandbox, how far would an 025 get me? Well, so far it's much better. And ain't no way it actually clears. Or at least it's very close to clearing. Yeah, it is very close to clearing. Welp. You probably beat it if I tried again, but that'll do for now. Hope you enjoyed three chimps runs in this one video. And if you want to see more funny two towers chimps runs, then click here. Otherwise, see you next time.